Welcome to another uh, TBD CFB special. We are reviewing the live reacting basically to the playoff rankings uh, in after week 12. Got them playing down here. We're going to get into these rankings. Um, last week, you know, we saw some things that were very surprising uh, to us, especially, you know, Georgia getting dropped down so far after a loss to Ole Miss. Uh, what else, guys? Miami still being ranked high. Missouri still in the top 25. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put our rankings up right here. You'll notice me and Isaac, we actually still have Missouri at 25. Isaac, I don't know about you. The only reason I kept them there is, and again, this is not our own rankings, right? This is a prediction on what the CFP committee will do. But they've shown us time and time and time and time again that Missouri can literally get blown out and still be in the ranking. So my my prediction for them at 25, dropping from 24 to 25, they almost beat a really talented South Carolina team on the road, they lose in, a, in an instant classic. And I think the committee is going to say, well, Brady Cook played well. This team looks good. And you know what? They just happened to drop this one. We're going to keep them in there because they're still a top 25 team. Now, of course, none of us agree with that. We've been very vocal on this show about it. However, uh, that's that's where kind of our heads are. Uh, some other notable ones. Arizona State, we all have them right here at 21, uh, guessing that they're going to come in after defeating K-State. This is actually a question we posed on the show last week, will a win over Kansas State be enough to jump Arizona State into these rankings? And we all think, as of right now, yes. So uh, what did you guys think about that win for them? 10-point win on the road in Manhattan. I think it was definitely a convincing win. Uh, I think that it showed that Arizona State could compete against a legitimate team. Uh, but also their defense really you know, showed up that game, uh, you know, holding Avery Johnson down. Um, so yeah, that's what really what gave me, gave me the edge to putting them in. Yeah. And just the same for me. I mean, they, I, I, of course I picked K state and I really thought K state would win handily. They were favored by I think 10 points. And meanwhile, Arizona state covered the other way. So they put up a really good win, a good win for the Sun Devils. And Honestly, a big shock to me, but um, I think they definitely earned their way into the top 25 after a big win like that, like you mentioned, Mason, on the road uh, in Manhattan. And here's another one I wanted to ask about. This is one we're all in disagreement on. So, obviously, BYU, uh, they take this big, uh, horrid loss. I mean, it's a big loss because they were undefeated, and now the Big 12 uh, only really has an opportunity to get one team in uh, with the SEC and the Big 10 being just the best conferences in college football once again this year. Uh, BYU loses, but we all have them at different spots. I have them dropping only two spots to eight. For me, that's based on having them drop uh, or having other teams around them not drop that far after taking a loss, even to an unranked team. They probably will drop farther. I can admit that. But just based on what I've seen the committee do, I'm, I am going a little bit under uh, what they will probably do. Um, how about Joey? Joey, you dropped BYU all the way to 14. What's your reasoning there? Um, For me, it's really um... – you know, they take a loss here and you just have to wonder. I think that loss really makes you think, okay, now you can kind of think if we put them up against these other teams, are they really comparative? And I I don't think so. I think it shows they're not comparative to teams such as Boise State, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Tennessee, who even took a loss to Georgia, I still don't think BYU. It shows that BYU is not on that level, um, you know, especially not on the same level as Oregon and Ohio State. So yes, I think it's and I just, hate to cut you off, but we are about yeah. to start these rankings. Uh, so number twenty-five, we do bring in Illinois. Uh, so Joey, uh, he did predict Illinois at twenty-four, but not that close. Close. Not, not exactly, but sorry, I meant to say not exactly, but close. Number 24, UNLV. Joey, just two off here. UNLV comes in at 24. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, so it looks like they are going to drop Missouri out of the rankings, uh, which I, me and Isaac were both wrong on. Obviously, only kept them in there because they've kept them in there every other week. Oh, my God, they kept Missouri in. They bumped them up to 23 after taking a loss. What? And number 22, Iowa State. Hold wow. on. Missouri's actually still in. They're, they they didn't just stay in. They went up. And then number 22, Iowa State. Guys, what is happening? <laughs> and then at number 21, which we all wow. get right, yes, Arizona State. Uh, so far, all I can say is, 
what? What in the freaking heck is going on? So you're telling me that Missouri goes on the road and they lose to South Carolina, who is a ranked team, don't get me wrong, but they jump up? Ah, uh, I, I don't understand it. That's a weird decision by them. Um, I guess they're – who all was their losses? Alabama, South Carolina, two ranked, and then who was their other one? Uh, I'm not sure, but we do have two lane, number 20. Okay. Number 22 lane. So that is going to be uh, correct for me and Joey bumping them up that far to 20 here. Uh, Tulane obviously coming off that big win against Navy. They just jumped from 25. They won't jump Army, though. However, Army will stay above them at 19, which me and Joey also got correct. And Isaac kept two – or they, he just had them flip-flopped. So not a bad pick there. Uh, South Carolina will only jump up to 18, uh, which me and Isaac got wrong. Joey did wow. predict them not to jump Clemson. Uh, even though I thought I would, I thought they would jump Clemson, but of course is there shocking. is Clemson at number seventeen. I'm actually kind of shocked that they didn't jump, but just something told me. I think me and you talked about it, and number sixteen um, at Colorado. But continue. Yeah, me and you talked about it. Like Pitt isn't a bad win; like it's no. a good win still. So yes. I think they took that into consideration. I just don't understand them not jumping Clemson with how much they value. Missouri. Missouri comes to your house. You beat them significantly. It's a good, it's an instant classic SEC game. But yeah, I, I don't know. At number 15, we're, of course, we're going to have A&M. Uh, A&M coming off a big win against New Mexico. Um, I, you know, guys, you know who I do not see uh, yet is Washington State. So I guess that is going to drop them all the way out. Number 14, we will have BYU. They're going to drop eight spots. Only one who got that right. So far, yep, that's Joey. Joey has gotten 21 to 14 right. Uh, I think he's going to get all the way up to 11 at least correct uh, because things aren't going to change much here. Um, so good on you, buddy. But we were talking about this earlier, dropping BYU all the way to 14. I guess that loss to Kansas, uh, you know, first of all, I was dead wrong. I want to I want to preface that and said I could be wrong. But, yeah, BYU, uh, that's a far drop uh, from going undefeated and then dropping all the way to 14. Uh, but, guys, I just – I'm still I'm still in shock <laughs> about that Missouri ranking. Uh, that that's probably going to be the the big story here. Probably BYU dropping pretty far too. Uh, Thirteen will be SMU, and I'm going to guess that number twelve is going to be Boise State. Um, I do not see Tennessee dropping all the way to twelve. Uh, or excuse me, I didn't see them dropping all the way to thirteen, but we'll see. So is number twelve going to be Tennessee or Boise State? That is the question. Uh, Joey and Isaac both have Boise State going there. I have Tennessee sliding all the way down. This is interesting. I mean, Boise them... State will be at 12, so Tennessee may be yeah. at 11. I don't think there's any way they can keep Tennessee ranked above Georgia. Now they're both two losses, and Georgia holds a tiebreaker over those two. Yeah. Uh, we will see here uh, as they bring out number 11 in just a second. Um, but, yeah, I, I, Boise State, they both come up. SMU comes up one, obviously dropping BYU below them. Not sure how I feel about that. SMU, I definitely understand. Boise State being a group of five, though. I'm just I'm just not sure. I know they have Ash and Gene T. Uh, we talked about this last week. Oh, and Tennessee will be at 11, which makes sense. Called that, dropped four spots from number seven. But Boise State here, I mean, do you guys think that Heisman has anything to do with what they're trying to do here? As they, as they say that number 10 is going to be Georgia. We're going to jump up two spots to number 10. I almost had Georgia there. Oh, my gosh, because I knew they were going to keep Ole Miss above them. Yep, I don't know why you jumped them. I jumped them because I no. thought it was a better win. And number nine is Ole Miss. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're going to hold the tiebreaker there at eight and two, which is uh, going to which is gonna go all the way down. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. Number eight will be Miami. Wow. That means that Alabama is going to jump up a few spots after destroying Mercer, I guess. Interesting. Wow. Alabama at seven. Typical Bama bias. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one, Isaac. I didn't think any of us saw that coming. Uh, obviously, uh, we all had the exact same six through one, and I think it's going to be pretty obvious. Uh, I think number six is going to be Notre Dame. Uh, I, what do you guys think? I mean, the only real good win that they have, Notre Dame will be at six. The only good win that they have right now, guys, is over Texas A&M in week one. 
Is that, is yeah. that enough to carry them to a sixth spot? I mean, they've been beaten up on other ACC teams and destroyed Navy, but um, and Indiana will be at five. I, I can pretty much tell you guys right now, guys, five is going to be Indiana, four Penn State, three Texas, two Ohio State, one Oregon. None of that's yeah. going to change. Um, yeah, this, this, top five is going to be pretty straightforward. Yeah, this, this will be extremely interesting to see. Um, we probably won't go too far, too much farther. However, um, nothing, none of that's going to change as none of those teams lost and Indiana actually came off a bye week. Um, so I, I don't think that anything there is going to change, but yeah, let's talk about that. So just to continue that question, excuse me, Notre Dame, is that one win they have enough to get them into the playoffs? Cause who, cause they have the one awful loss to NIU, but besides that, you know, win, who else do they have? So I will I will point out that yes Notre Dame has been playing against you know some ACC teams as well as you know Army Navy and such. ACC actually has a winning record against all the conferences except for the SEC. So there's that. Not much, but still they played some of the better teams in the ACC. I will say that except for Virginia. They ha- all their wins have been convincing. Granted, their one loss was horrendous. Um, we'll see how they match up against a Southern Cal team later on. But as of right now, I'm not shocked by it. I don't know how far they would make it into the playoffs. Um, you know, them being a very run dominant team, um, very inconsistent passing wise. But they are a team that like you can watch and kind of be confident in being in that top ten. So. I'm not shocked that they'd be considered in the playoffs. Yeah, so now they have released all of the rankings. They're going to be taking a look at the actual bracket. Obviously, uh, you would have the four. This is crazy to look think about right now, but Boise State would actually get a first-round buy since they are ranked above the highest-ranked Big 12 team. So your first-round buys would be Boise State as the Mountain West Group of Five auto bid, Oregon as the Big Ten champion, uh, Miami as the ACC champion, and Texas as of right now. Uh, as the SEC champion, and then BYU would be the first one out um, in the first round. Excuse me. They would be the first round because they would be the Big 12 champion. That's where they would go. Um, First team out and second team out would be Tennessee and SMU as of right now. Um, Something else we talked about, guys, is that South Carolina, they have a really good shot at the playoff, but they're going to need some things in front of them to happen, which they already got this week, right? So they jumped from 21. Now they're ranked at 18. They jumped three spots, right? Uh, They're a three-loss SEC team. If they go on the road and beat Clemson, would that be the final nail in the coffin to make sure that they get into the CFP, right? Because we saw Louisville lose above them. We saw uh, who else lose above them? Washington State lost above them. Kansas State lost above them. Uh, Which, guys, they dropped out Kansas State, too. They're gone as well. That's interesting. So, uh, But back to South Carolina. South Carolina, they went out. They have a couple teams lose above them. Do you think that it's possible that they could not be left out if they beat Clemson? I think it's possible. I think that the fact that they absolutely obliterated um, they obliterated A and M, who A and M of course is fifteenth right now. They had a a big should, probably closer than it should have been win against Missouri. They should have beaten LSU, and and of course we can't play the woulda shoulda coulda game when it comes to CFP rankings. But I would argue they've got a great shot if they went out and if they go to Clemson and win. I think that that's that's a that's a done deal at least to give them the best shot um, if they go to Clemson and win that game but they have to win out for sure. Man, this is what's so exciting about the college football landscape right now. Man, is there's just so there. I mean, there's so much that could happen. Deadlocks, ties, all the conference expansion, and then not only that, but you've got two games left. So South Carolina, since we're speaking of them, they play Wofford this Saturday, which is going to be an absolute blowout. I guarantee it. Wofford is an FCS school. I know people are going to be like, well, you never know. But it's Wofford, and it's South Carolina with how hot they've been. There's no way. Um, But then you go on the road, and you play Clemson. Just like Isaac's saying, if South Carolina goes on the road and and wins, and then the committee is looking at those three losses they have, the only definitive, truly like awful loss they had was Ole Miss. And Lenora Sellers wasn't even playing. It was the backup, Robbie Ashford. All right, what about LSU? Robbie, excuse me, Lenora Sellers went down in the middle of that game, and Robbie Ashford had to finish it. And they had two pick sixes called back. Garrett Nussmeyer threw two interceptions, and they got called back because of penalties on the actual return. 
So LSU still got a win that they didn't deserve. And and I think the committee could look at that and say, you know, and then they almost beat Alabama. And then, you know, the committee looks at that and says, this is a really good South Carolina team. They're one of the hottest teams in the country right now. They just beat a ranked Clemson team on the road in one of the toughest stadiums in the country. How do they not get in? The real Death Valley, too. Okay. But, guys, uh, we have some interesting playoff matchups here just to look at it, right? So you'd have number 12 BYU at Ohio State in the first round. Uh, You'd have Alabama at Notre Dame, Georgia at Penn State, Ole Miss at Indiana, and just in the first round. All of those Big Ten teams except for Notre Dame, uh, that would be I, – I, I know a lot of people were not happy about the 12-team the format, and I know a lot of people wanted more teams, like 16, 2014. But, guys, I, I think this is going to be really, really interesting to see how some of these games play out, and I think that this is a good thing for college football and especially a good thing for uh, like getting, getting playoff games at home. It's like the NFL, man. It's like – it's really cool. Like we get these playoff games. Like, 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 like just thinking about Georgia – going to Beaver Stadium, like a place they never played before. Like, or not, okay, they haven't played there in a while, is my point. That would be an incredible matchup. Ole Miss at Indiana. Alabama at Notre Dame. I mean, that is a blue blood classic matchup. I'm super excited. I think the 12-team format is great. I'm really excited about it. Like, like, just hit me with your thoughts, and then we'll wrap it up here, guys. I think that it'll be really fun to watch. I don't know how, you know pristine and clean it'll be this year only because it's the first year um but you know i think it gives a lot of opportunities for teams who haven't been able to get those kind of opportunities i think the same goes for the whole nil thing uh gives a lot of teams more opportunities um and i just gotta say the day oregon the oregon ducks are number one is the day college football is living good. So, well, I'll just say this: I was one of those people, and I still don't know exactly if if twelve is too many. But I definitely never thought we should have more than twelve. I thought eight was sufficient because after you got inside the top eight, it could be iffy. Now, I thought that up until this year, when now you've got you know so many upsets, so many close games with teams who probably really shouldn't be close. So, I'm really excited about this. I mean, the fact that Georgia could play at Penn State, and Penn State obviously would probably blow it like very easily because, well, we watched the Ohio State game and they should have won that one. But anyway, I'm really excited about this as well. All I know for sure is that I don't have to buy playoff tickets because LSU's not going to be in it. So that's good. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely right, man. And uh, as a Georgia fan, obviously I'm very excited to uh, see Alabama, see Georgia, excuse me, not Alabama, <laughs> see Georgia back in the top 12. All we got to do is finish out against UMass at Georgia Tech. Super excited about that. Super excited that, yeah, we could go to Penn State. That We're seeing these home playoff games, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, I just got married this past weekend. My my now wife, Abigail, who's been on the podcast a couple times, our social media director, uh, you know, she's a big South Carolina fan. I pulled for South Carolina for her, and I am really hoping uh, that South Carolina can finish out strong. Sorry, Joey, but get a win in Death Valley for the second time in three years. And uh, – make a playoff spot. It'd be awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching. Come back and see our episode on Thursday. We're going to be picking the biggest games of the week, uh, heading into Thanksgiving, getting ready for not, not rivalry week this week, but next week. And we're getting excited for it guys. And always remember, no matter what team you pull for, you're on God's side. You're always on the winning team. There's a father in heaven who loves you. If you ever have any questions about the gospel, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We will 100% talk to you about it. And any other questions you have, we thank you so much for listening and we will see you on Thursday.